Ceremonies are an ancient art form of the soul that are largely becoming a lost tradition. Communities used to gather around the fire during every full moon to support one another in releasing and receiving the ebbs and flows of life. If a community member was going through a particularly rough time, everyone would gather in ceremony to show them they weren't alone. Now, we mainly save ceremony for special milestone occasions, such as baptisms, confirmations, weddings, and funerals. Ceremonies are meant to help your soul move through rites of passages so you can gracefully cross into what's next for you. Ceremonies can be held for closure or celebration. You can design a ceremony for yourself, or you can allow one to unfold organically when your soul feels called to have one. Either way, ceremonies help your soul put to rest what needs to sleep and also awaken what needs to rise. In this lesson, I'm sharing elements you can use to build your own ceremony. Rather than limiting you to a templated ceremony, I find it important that your soul produces the ceremony it's needing. Allow yourself to plan the ceremony from a place of flow, inspiration, and beauty. Really, you can't mess it up. Just listen and design from your heart. There are a few things that you can get creative with if you're planning a ceremony. First off, there's the garments. Just as the white dress is the garment for a bride to wear at her wedding, you can dress yourself in a special dress, or you can even go as far as wearing face paint, even if it's just a cool color of lipstick. Consider putting something on that helps you step into the energy you're wanting to be in during the ceremony. Factor in how you want to feel. Do you want to feel beautiful or fierce? But if you want, you can even show up naked. It's your party. (laughs) Second, there's the location and date. You can take yourself to a special place or even hold a ceremony right in your bedroom. What matters is you feel safe and you set the intentions for the space to be sacred. Popular times for ceremonies in many spiritual traditions are new moons when you want to release or shed and full moons when you want to celebrate or bring into fruition. Another important aspect of ceremony is the incorporation of elements. So you want to choose a location that allows for the elements of your choice to be used. You can use fire, water, earth, and air to help you work with the energy in your ceremony. Fire is the most transformative of elements and good for releasing energy you want to let go of. For instance, if you're holding a ceremony of closure for a past relationship, it's a great idea to burn those items in that shoebox that you moved out of your room during our detox week. Water is beautiful for giving your emotions to and to help you feel cleansed. Earth is great to use if you are needing to feel connected with the physical or grounded or you're initiating something you're ready to plant and grow. And air is awesome for manifesting as you are sending your wishes into the wind. And lastly, your ceremony needs witnesses. There have been ceremonies held where individuals have invited their close girlfriends to come and celebrate, or you can even design a beautiful ceremony for you and your partner if you're in a new phase of your relationship, or you can call the moon to be your witness, or you can also call forward your guides to be your witnesses. The ocean or the trees can be your witnesses. My dog has even been a witness for me, but it's important that you feel held and seen in your moment of shifting. Okay, so now that we've covered all of those general parts of a ceremony, I'm going to give you a few specifics that you can use for either a ceremony of closure or a ceremony of celebration. Once again, these are all just recommendations, so please feel free to get creative and add in your own elements too. Before any ceremony, I like to ground myself and do a few rounds of long, deep breathing, as well as open my Wirakocha. You want to step into the ceremony feeling connected to your soul. So for a ceremony of closure, first, hold the intention of acceptance. 
this essentially is a prayer or the sending of energy to show you have accepted what has been. You are metaphorically closing the cover to the book of the story you are leaving behind. You are declaring that you have found peace within your heart to move forward. This can even be as simple as holding your hands over your heart and whispering, all is well. Next, share your last words. You can take out a pen and paper and write down the last words you have for what you are seeking closure around. Maybe it's the final letter you write to the relationship you are releasing, or maybe you are saying goodbye to a past version of yourself. Whatever you have left to be said, this is the time to say it. You don't even have to write it down either. You can just voice whatever it is that's coming through you too. Then send prayers of reverence. This looks like revisiting the lessons you have learned from what you are now bringing to a close. What good came from the pain, struggle, or challenge that you are releasing? Take some time to allow those precious moments to come through in your ceremony. Then there is the laying to rest. This will be an act of transformation for the closure you are seeking. It could look like burying or burning an object that was related to what you are closing. Use one of the four elements to transform the energy for you. And lastly, you'll close with an offering of remembrance. You will offer flowers, a stone, or an item that has meaning to symbolize that this is now complete in your soul. This is a way to show respect an honor for what you are closing and also as a final nod to what was. Close your Wiracocha and your ceremony is complete. Next, let's talk about your ceremony of celebration. You'll once again want to open your Wiracocha and bless the space of your ceremony. First, you'll initiate the permission to release and receive. Just as in weddings, when the parents give permission for the groom to receive the bride, you are granting yourself permission to shed the skin that's no longer serving you and step into the new energy that you are celebrating. Next, you'll conduct a defining moment act. In a wedding, the bride's defining moment is walking down the aisle, or the couple's defining moment is when they kiss. Get creative with your defining moment. You can build a mandala of flowers to define your beauty, or you can even write or read a poem or sing a song. Just do something that will help you channel the new energy you are adorning yourself with. And then there will be the integration of new. You want to feel as though you are fully receiving and holding the new energy. This is where you can bring in one of the four elements, like perhaps you plant seeds in the earth or do a meditation with a crystal. You can also take a stick and write your wishes into the dirt or even blow out a candle like it's your birthday. You want this act to feel like you are crossing over into your new way of being. Next, bring in your token of initiation. For ceremonies of celebration, it can be fun to give yourself a token of initiation. Some people have gotten tattoos to symbolize their ceremony, or you can get yourself a piece of jewelry. In weddings, the token is the wedding bands. In a self-love ceremony on my 29th birthday, I gave myself a pinky ring, but it doesn't have to be something expensive, just something that feels special. Lastly, toast the occasion. Say closing remarks. You can do this by stating the promise you've made to yourself or expressing gratitude for what you are celebrating. Toast to the moon, the sky, the trees, the ocean, whatever feels good. And that's it. Close your sacred space and you are officially in your new energy. As we are in the sacred space of our class, I highly recommend that you have some fun and design a ceremony for yourself. There, of course, is no rush if you don't feel called to it yet. Let's say you're having a hard time feeling ready to initiate closure around something. You can even create a mini ceremony of celebration in honor of your soul getting closer to even wanting closure. This act itself will help you move forward and feel more ready for the bigger ceremonies to come. So what ideas are coming for you? Do you think you'll do a ceremony of closure or a ceremony of celebration? I can't wait to hear about what your soul's design for you.